The only way to watch the 2023 National Wrestling Championships is on ESPN and ESPNU. I'll give you the easy breakdown on how to watch with and without cable so you don't get confused or miss any of the action. Plus, if you stick around, I have some kick butt wrestling stats to share on some of the competitors in the field. All that in this week's wrestling headlines presented by The Wrestling Consultant. Now let's stop stalling and look at the schedule. So, if you're not going to Tulsa, Oklahoma on March 16th through the 18th, then you need another way to watch the tournament. It's easy enough if you have cable because you just tune in to ESPN and ESPNU. But if you don't, then this is when I recommend using Hulu Live TV. It's a streaming platform that includes all of the channels you need to watch the tournament. That's ESPN and ESPNU. Yes, it includes all this extra stuff. And for your sports fans, ACC, Big Ten Network, et cetera, et cetera. It includes Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, and Hulu. But most importantly, the two channels that you need to actually watch wrestling. Now, this starts with a free trial. Then it is $70 a month after that. But it is canceled at any time time now i have a link make to make it easy for you down in the description below so you can sign up for the service the long and short of it is you're going to have to pay to watch the national championships whether it is through cable or through streaming or to get a ticket to make it more affordable what i recommend is maybe going to your local bar or restaurant asking them to put it on tv like come on get get the basketball off tv let's put some wrestling on come on and or you get some of your friends together family together and maybe you split the streaming fee i think those are the best ways to watch it but what are the actual rounds what do those look like well this comes from the ncaa's website and so yeah there this date is wrong so don't jump on me for that uh, Thursday, March 16th, the tournament kicks off with the first round at noon. These times are in central time. So if you're Eastern time, add an hour to it. So noon, the second round is at in the evening at 7 p.m. Generally, and actually, actually, the every round in the morning is on ESPNU. The evening rounds are on ESPN. The Friday night or the Friday session is quarterfinals at noon. Then the best round in all of college wrestling is the blood round and semi in the semifinals round. They happen simultaneously in the most wild round of all of college wrestling. You've guys getting their hearts broken or getting super excited because they just made the finals. It gets wild. The emotions run rampant. That is the Friday night session. At 8 p.m. on ESPN. The medal rounds are Saturday at 11. And between you and me, it's probably my least favorite round of all of them. Just because there aren't really that many stakes. We get some of the best matchups. But everybody's ready mid-podium at that point. And the finals, the NCAA finals, are Saturday night at 7 p.m. on ESPN. Do not miss them of course i will be covering all of this on fanco wrestling so make sure you're subscribed to keep updated with that and i want to also ask you a question because i hope all of this was helpful but what is your favorite wrestling moment is there a favorite wrestling moment you've had from na the nationals watching nationals because i've certainly been watching for many years at this point point. and some of my fondest memories watching the national tournament was when i was in high school i'd see guys that i knew and grew up with and wrestled with be actually wrestling on the big stage. If you're a high school wrestler watching nationals and thinking, how can I wrestle at NCAAs one day? Let me break it down for you. It starts with getting accepted to college. But when do you start applying and talking to coaches? Do you have to visit campuses? How do you keep track of all the eligibility stuff? And what would make you a more attractive prospect? Oh, that can be totally overwhelming. And I don't have all the answers for you. Luckily, I know someone who does. Teague Moore started the wrestling consultant specifically to answer questions like those for wrestlers and their parents trying to navigate the recruiting process. If you or your wrestler needs help and you don't want to go through this process alone, you can talk one-on-one -on -one with this former D1 head coach and national champion who truly understands the entire process. If something like this existed back when I was in high school, it would have been so helpful. I recommend you start with a free introductory call by going to thewrestlingconsultant.com. Thanks to The Wrestling Consultant for sponsoring this video. So, to get you further prepared, I got some quick stats for you on the guys in the NCAA field. Starting with the undefeated wrestlers in the entire NCAA. There are 12 of them. 
And not every single weight class has them. In fact, 149 and 184 are the only two weight classes who have zero undefeated wrestlers. We all know how crazy 149 has been. I mean, it has been an absolute mess and craze, and I'm excited to see how it actually shakes out. But 184 is the other one that has had some upsets, but hasn't been as crazy as 149. Now, every single undefeated wrestler is a number one or number two seed, except for one guy, and I'll get to him because we're going to go weight by weight, starting off with Spencer Lee. He is 17-0 and this season, entering Nationals undefeated for another time in his career. He's been on a tear this year. I would be shocked if he wins and doesn't just get the hard trophy outright. I'll be interested to see if he ends up tying with Yanni since Yanni does have a loss on his record. Now, he is going to be going up likely against Patrick Glory in the finals. I mean, it's not a foregone conclusion, but Glory is the other undefeated wrestler, 20-0. and And we all know he, he's been wrestling well this season for Princeton, but he has been wanting to wrestle Spencer Lee ever since the last time that he lost to him. Bumping up at 133, we have Roman Brava Young of Penn State, who's 16-0. and And interestingly enough, somebody who has 10 more wins than him, and some of the most wins of these undefeated guys is Dayton Fix, who's 26-0 this year. He has had so many undefeated seasons going into nationals at this point, it's hard to keep track of. But I'll be interested to see if that those extra matches end up playing into getting more experience, getting more on the mat exposure to all these different guys, and maybe just having that extra bit of oomph to beat RBY. To be with that said, like it's not like RBY has skipped out on matches like where we've seen some guys wrestle like 10 and 10 matches or 11 matches going to nationals rby hasn't been one of those guys and actually none of these guys have really been like that this year which i can respect moving up to 141 we have a similar situation with real woods of iowa who's had impressive records going to nationals like throughout his entire career it's from his freshman year and onwards he is undefeated at 16 and 0 then we have Andrew Alvarez, 23-0, the number two seed of Northern Colorado, who has had a great year taking out the likes of Cole Matthews, the number one ranked wrestler, winning a Big 12 title, being that aggressive guy at 141. We're skipping over 149 because there is no undefeated wrestler there. But at 157, we have Austin O'Connor, former national champion, and the number one seed has risen in the ranks this year. He is 18-0 this season. And then the other guy at this weight who's undefeated is Josh Humphreys of Lehigh, who's 16-0. He is the only undefeated wrestler not to earn a number one or number two seed. In fact, he is the number five seed. And it, it's understandable because he hasn't wrestled the level of competition as some of the other guys, but he can definitely make some waves at 157. At 165, you have David Carr of Iowa State, who's 22-0, and Big 12 champion, took out Keegan O'Toole, who was undefeated at the time. At 74, you have Carr Sirachi of Penn State, 19-0. Bumping up one more, you have Nino Bonacorsi, 16-0 of Pitt, and he is somebody who's definitely impressed me this season with just how well he has wrestled. I'll be excited to see if he can make the national finals again like he has in the past. And then the guy who has been the dominant heavyweight is Mason Paris, who is 28-0, has the most wins out of all of these guys in the weight class. If he ends up going through this season undefeated, I don't know, maybe you see him enter the Hodge Trophy split with Spencer Lee if he ends up winning. Of course, that's what I'm interested to know is, if a couple of these guys finish undefeated, could we see multiple Hodge Trophy winners just like we did with Gable and Spencer back a few years ago? I don't know. It's definitely something that could happen. And the next question that comes up with undefeated wrestlers is, who is the longest active winning streaks? Well, you see here, Patrick Glory of Princeton is one of those guys with 20 straight wins. Other guys in the mix are Austin O'Connor with 22 straight wins of North Carolina, Andrew Alvarez of Northern Colorado with 23, and Dayton Fix of Oklahoma State with 26 straight wins. But let's move to the top five guys because David Carr is is one of them with 28 straight wins. And I think what's most impressive about David Carr is not that he has beaten Keegan O'Toole twice this year and the former national champion of that 165 in 2022 or that he's won a Big 12 title or that he's even bumped up a weight. I think the impressive part here is that he has a former 
winning streak that dated back before this. His loss at last year's national championships obviously sent shockwaves through the wrestling community. But imagine if he hadn't lost that and continued his winning streak. He would have, I believe, the longest winning streak in all of college wrestling if it wasn't for that one loss. But of course, he did have that loss. So the guy above him is Mason Paris, who with his win in the NCAA Placer Grounds last year, ends up having 28 straight wins. This year is sitting at 29-0. and And what a season he's had, taking out Greg Kirkfleet not once, but twice, taking out Anthony Cassiope. And in dominant fashion, is the number one seed at the NCAA Championships. We'll see if he continues to have that streak continue with over 30 wins if he wins a national title. And another guy who is in this mix is Carter Sirachi. And we see a massive bump here because this is a guy who hasn't lost in a few years. That is Sirachi, who has 47 straight wins. The Big Ten champion, the two-time national champion. His last loss was to Michael Kemmerer of Iowa in the Big Ten finals back from a few years ago. Wow. That is crazy. And his teammate, Roman Bravo Young, has 52 straight wins. If he does end up winning a national title, he'll finish with 57 win streak. That is insane throughout that time. But there's only one guy who has a winning streak longer than him. No, it's not Yanni D. Although he would be up there with a, just like David Carr, who if they didn't have that one loss, they would have over, he would have over a, 100 match winning streak. Oh, that would have been crazy. Oh, man, I wish that would have happened. Oh, well, Spencer Lee is the guy who is 55 straight wins dating back to a couple years going for his fourth title and has dominated this season. He'll end with 60 match winning streak if he wins his national title. And to stay updated on all the NCAA championships news, make sure you are subscribed to Fanco Wrestling. I got coverage dropping throughout the entire week. But first, if you want to watch the NCAA bracket breakdown, there were some crazy things and seeds that you may have missed. This video is right here.